So basically, I'm redoing the Left 4 Dead 2 and 1 Iceberg. Why? Mostly because last year I did the Iceberg, but it was really bad and it was kind of unscripted, but all of my videos are unscripted. So here I am doing it again. Oh yeah, I want to mention, I don't have any videos, so I'll just show photos in the Iceberg. So, here we start the Left 4 Dead Iceberg. Re-explained. CEDA or C-E-D-A. C-E-D-A was supposed to prevent the disease from traveling to everybody, but failed, and then you have zombies and hazmat suits. Bill's hat, Alice's cap, and a frying pan. All of these items were references or promotional items for TF2. The workshop. This is referring to the Left 4 Dead 2 workshop in Steam. Where you can, you know, download skins, maps, gun skins, other stuff. Dang it. It's not a real reason, but dang it was supposed to be a map. But it was cut from Left 4 Dead 1, and people just assumed it was supposed to be a test map. The Midnight Riders. The Midnight Riders is a fictional band in Left 4 Dead 2, and they're shown in Dark Carnival. The Last Stand Update. The Last Stand update was made in 2020, and it featured a new campaign, new achievements, new melee, letters, ETC. Survivor Carriers The survivors in Left 4 Dead, they're not infected, but they're carriers of the virus, but they don't really have the symptoms. PILLS HERE! In Left 4 Dead 1, when Lewis finds pills, he'll occasionally yell, PILLS HERE! And that saying basically became a meme in the Left 4 Dead 2 community. There's even a whole song out of it. Bill's full name. I'm actually not sure what William Bill Overbeck's full name is, really. Suicide Blitz 2. This is a fan made Left 4 Dead map made by a guy named Dangerous Person. Jimmy Gibbs Jr. In Dead Center, when the Left 4 Dead 2 survivors go in the mall, Ellis says he loves Jimmy Gibbs Jr. He's his biggest fan, but he never gets his autograph because of the zombie apocalypse. And also, Jimmy Gibbs Jr. is a rare zombie which yet to only come with headshots and he could blind you with his oil. So yeah, that's who Jimmy Gibbs Jr. is. Back for Blood Back for Blood is made by the same developers of Left 4 Dead 2, which was Turtle Rock Studios. And it's basically supposed to be Left 4 Dead 3, I guess. But people didn't really like it that much. Or at least I didn't really like it that much. The AI Director. So it shouldn't be too hard to understand. But an AI Director in Left 4 Dead 2 is basically where if you're doing really good in the game, then less med kits, adrenaline shots, pills will show. But then if you're kind of doing a little bad... Health is going down quickly, infected are still getting you. Then more med kits and adrenaline kits would spawn. And sometimes when you're doing really good, the paths to some maps will change. So for example, in the parish, you go through you jump over some fence, but if you're doing really good, then you just go through some random like doorway. Or it's vice versa, or the other way around. So that was the tip of the iceberg, tier one. Now, we're moving to Tier 2. The Sacrifice Tank from Left 4 Dead 1 The Sacrifice Tank was in Left 4 Dead 1, and since I'm not really sure it shows only the Sacrifice, I'll explain the two other tanks. So there's the Left 4 Dead 2 tank, which is just, you know, more red wears some jeans and there's a soldier tank that actually has a tattoo somewhere on his body but you can't really see it the bride witch the bride witch appears on the passing in left 4 dead 2 and uh, which is i guess rejected or her husband gets infected so she is i guess crying but at the same time the witch is usually crying but it's for some unknown reason Bill and Dead by Daylight In 2017, the makers of Dead by Daylight decided to add Bill from Left 4 Dead into, well, Dead by Daylight for some reason. 
And one of the funny things about this entry is uh, the survivors are actually featured two more times in two other games, which we'll get into later. The Screamer. The Screamer was a cut infected from Left 4 Dead 1, and it wasn't added mostly because it was too annoying and too hard to kill. Basically what the Screamer would do is that if you annoy it, it would scream, alert all the infected to get you, and yeah. I mean, there is an infected like this in State of Decay 2, but I don't play that, so you can ask Res Test about that. But it was cut, and I'm going to guess the witch kind of replaced it since they do look a little similar. The Fate of All the Pilots This is referring mostly to most of the NPCs in the game, and how most of them died. The only ones I know actually survived, or only one, is Virgil. That's like the only person I know who survived. But there is the other ones who died, like the pilots in Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, the news chopper 5 guy, and probably the final guy would be a church guy, but he died, I guess. The Sacrifice webcomic. If you remember a few entries ago when I mentioned there was carriers that came from the Sacrifice comic. And basically it was made by somebody, which I still don't know. But, there is a bunch of other comics which are mostly fan made. Mill, Haven, or Haven. So at first when you see Mill Haven, you might be thinking, oh, you mean the hard rain, the mill? Welp, no, it came from the Left 4 Dead comic again. And basically, the Mill Haven is a military outpost. Ellis Dabbed. I couldn't really find anything on Ellis Dabbing. Charger Lambda. In Swamp Fever, when you get to that little machine boat thing that makes you travel across the lake, you'll find this charger just hung up like the Lambda logo from Valve. And I tried editing it the best I could, but it was a little difficult. Blight Path. Blight Path is a really popular custom made map by somebody that's unknown. I'm not really sure why, because it wouldn't really show their name. Also, it's supposed to be like Dead Air Part 2. Zoe killed her father. In the Left 4 Dead comic, because this is probably a fur entry going on this, Zoe's family is eating at dinner, but then some common infected just barges in somehow and chomps on Zoe's mom. Her mom becomes infected, sadly, but then she chomps on her dad. Like, maybe a small bite. And what ends up happening is that her dad's uh, getting infected. So, her dad gives Zoe a gun and tells her to shoot, shoot him. So, Zoe shoots him. And then, well, yeah. That's how uh, she killed her father. Which is really disturbing. Because that's how Zoe's uh, scarred for life. Wow, such gaming. Wow, such gaming is a YouTube channel that's been on YouTube for a few years now. And they do a lot of zombie content, including Left 4 Dead 2. And they did Left 4 Dead 2 a lot with doing like character files for survivors and infected, and some special infected. Jukebox Easter Eggs. So basically, if you keep on clicking the jukebox in um, the parish or any other map that has a jukebox in it, then if you keep on clicking it, then it'll eventually play the Still Alive song from Portal. Animal based infected. So there's basically technically two types of entries on this. There's technically animal based and then human based infected. Now I couldn't really find much on this, but um what I do know is that the smoker is supposed to be like some athlete and the hunter. The boomer is supposed to depict fat people or obese people, and the witch it's supposed to depict the depressed people, and then finally, the jockey is supposed to depict dwarfism. Also, there is a picture of a zombie dog that was going to be in the game, but it was removed, but there's still sounds to it. One Man Cheeseburger Apocalypse This is a saying Coach says in Hard Rain and Dead Center. And it basically became a meme in the Left 4 Dead 2 community, just like pills here. And that was tier 2 of the iceberg. Now we're moving into tier 3.
Messing with the Charger. Nasty Midnight presents Messing with Charger. Basically, a classic Left 4 Dead SFM animation. Tasty cools. Also, probably most of this uh, tier on the iceberg, or this part in the iceberg, it's probably gonna be a lot of these being shown. Tasty cools is a, a bunch of animations, mainly only nine of them so far, of Coach going on a rampage and doing really goofy stuff, but it's really funny. And it's been left for that for about nine years now. Beta Survivor Designs. So basically, in left for that one, they had beta the survivor designs in short to have right now. And left for that two technically had them, but really they're just, you know, color swaps. And also, left for that was originally going to be a Counter Strike game, or a look alike Counter Strike game, but then it was changed to a zombie game. The White Lie. The White Lie is an animation or SFM animation made by the Lone Wolf Channel. And I can't really explain uh, what happens in there because I basically spoil the whole thing. So I guess you could just watch the YouTube series for yourself, which is a whole two hours long. But I trust you, it'll be worth it. Dr. Val, Val, or whatever the heck that says, Francis. A Gary Mods video career that joined in 2010, and he basically made different SFM animations in Gary's mod, which uh, some of them showed Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead 2 Survivors and Resident Evil 6. So, a long time ago, Left 4 Dead 2 Survivors were added in as a DLC into Resident Evil 6, as you can see into this photo. BG Bean. So, BG Bean is an animator, uh, slash SFM animator, which I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. But they made, uh, SFM animations for Dead Center's all, all levels to it, so parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it also made the passing at least part 1 and 2. But part 3 was, like, kind of finished, but at the same time not finished. Uh, it was, it was mainly because of mental health issues. Chocolate Helicopter So in the Left 4 Dead 2 trailer or teaser or whatever you want to call it when it opens uh, When they're walking up when they're all running up the stairs coach gets a little exhausted and Nick says we could go get the chocolate helicopter And that basically became a meme in the Left 4 Dead 2 community So it's probably our third or fourth meme in this whole entire iceberg But at the same time we're only like three layers in so far Gnome Alone. I guess this could be referring to a few things, but uh, I guess we'll just tell three ones right now, or two. So, first one, there's a Gnome Alone achievement in for that where you have to rescue a gnome from Dark Carnival, from at least part two to Carnival to part, well, five or four, how many chapters there are in that. And then the other one, there's an achievement in Portal where you have, or Half Life. You have to get the gnome and put it in a time capsule or whatever and blast off into space. And yeah. And this gnome's been in Left 4 Dead forever. Well, since Dark Carnival. Elsa's Stories. This entry is referencing all the, uh, all the stories Elsa tells. But he doesn't really tell them completely half of the time because everybody tells him to shut up or something. Like Nick. Left for Speed. 
This entry in the iceberg references the animation made by Oni NG about a Left 4 Dead parody animation, which is pretty funny, and it's kind of a meme in the Left 4 Dead community. Okay, buddy, Ellis. So there's a certain audio, I guess, that plays. When Ellis talks about the story, Nick will say, okay, buddy, Ellis, so then Ellis will just, you know, stop talking about the story. Like any other person does, or any other survivor. And that was one to three of the iceberg parts, or entries, or layers, or whatever you want to call it. But that was one to three of the layers. And next will be four to six. Oh yeah, and this iceberg is the reason why I'm not uploading as consistently. But in between the, when I'm working on the iceberg, I'll probably upload maybe some old or new clips I have on Xbox. So at least uh, I post something, you know, like my school chaos OS fight. The passing secrets. Now this catch range from anything. So it could be, well, not flu, Bill's dead body near the elevator, or even just various random writings on the wall. A male witch. So we all know the depressed crying witch that we talked about earlier in the iceberg, right? Wow, well, there's actually gonna be a male witch that doesn't actually really have a name, so you kinda just have to refer to it as the male witch. Now you can't really find anything about the male witch because well, there's not really much besides from concept art and well yeah so all you really do is just download some random steam mod of the male witch cabin in the woods cabin in the woods is a 2011 horror slash comedy film now you might be questioning why is this on the iceberg well i'll give you two reasons why so the first reason why Cabin and Woods is here is because there's at least three slash four infected actually seeing these boxes in the end of the film. Which, as you can see, there's the witch, the tank, and the boomer. The hunter is kind of seen, but it's not really easy to see since it kind of looks like some random zombie or just some random monster in general. And then the second reason the Cabin and Woods is on this iceberg is because well, there was going to be a Left 4 Dead DLC based on it, but then it was removed, forgotten, and yeah. You could still search up things about it, but the map was going to be in the facility of the map. Or in the film, I guess you could say. Now, in my opinion, I wouldn't be about to see a tank punch some random guard that's trying to escape the, you know, falling and crumbling facility. No Mercy Heist. So basically, in Payday 2 on the No Mercy map, if you go to one of the doors, one of the random doors in the hallway, if you look into it, you'll see someone crying, and then there'll be a witch jump scaring you, I guess. Only difference being in the witch in this photo is that she actually has black hair and her skin looks a little paler and a little more white. The cut Rochelle lines. Oh, bird, you better be watching! Well, shit. We're here. Crescent City. I'll tell you now. I'm not showing anyone my tits. It worked! God bless your bad taste in music, coach! Can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? Thanks, coach. Uh, Nick, he's talking to me. Hey, can you lower the bridge? Then it's a date! <laughs> You're kidding, right? We're here, Crescent City. I'll tell you now, I'm not showing anyone- Oh, thank God! I thought I was the last woman on Earth! Those are some cut Rochelle lines from Left 4 Dead 2. They weren't really used, but you can still like, kinda access them if you go into like the server code. Fan Comics I already said this in the last layer, but there's fan comics of Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. 
And then, there's also virus that are part of a dead army. This entry is referring to how in 2021 of August, the zombie army developers decided to add the Left 4 Dead survivors from Left 4 Dead into that game. With the only difference being, the models were a little different and their voices weren't the same. They're just the main character's voices from Zombie Army instead of Left 4 Dead. The Midnight Riders website. So if you never actually attempted searching it, the Midnight Riders actually has a website of the band, even though, you know, it's fictional. Nick is a felon. So basically, this is a proven fact by Valve, but Nick is a convicted felon for some reason, it's not really shown why, but he's not legally allowed to own any guns. He actually says this in Dead Center when they go to the gun store. Plus, it says that Nick actually stole some fancy man's suit or coat, whatever you want to call that. Alright, so that was layer 4, so now we're moving on to layer 5. So most of these entries are actually uh, ships, and I'm going to explain what a ship is to you so I could at least explain these entries easier. So basically what a ship is, they have like one fictional character, then an other fictional character, and then let's put them together like they're like some couple or something. That's basically what a ship is, or at least on the internet. So uh, yeah, that's what most entries on this iceberg is. Francis Lambda. So if you look at Francis' haircut, you can see the Lambda logo from earlier when you're looking at the charger, you know, strung up as the Lambda logo from Half-Life slash Valve. The Green Flu Origins So there's actually a few Left 4 Dead origins, but I'll at least tell you one which came for our dear old friend Ellis. So Ellis tells a story about him and Keith camping out. He goes, a, he goes to a closed off camping zone. And we know it's actually a military testing zone. And basically what happens is they test lots of weapons and apparently uh, they like get effects from the weapons. So that uh, proves the theory that Ellis and Keith are technically the first survivors to be, you know, carriers of the virus and slash the green flu. But they weren't, you know, completely infected. Helm's Deep Bugs I kind of do, but then don't understand why this is, you know, in the fifth layer of the iceberg. But it's probably here, mostly because there's some players, or at least half of the players in Left 4 Dead, they play Xbox. Whereas the other half, they actually play, you know, PC. But basically, what this uh, layer is explaining is that there's this uh, really nice map called Helm's uh, Bug, or Helm's Deep. And basically, it's a really popular map, but it was really buggy since it was, you know, a really big map. But they were eventually fixed, so now people, you know, can play survival in it and stuff. Homchick or Kahomchick or whatever his name is. Homchick Drama. So since this is the iceberg, I'm not going to explain a whole review on uh, Homchick or whatever that guy's name is. Basically... He played Left 4 Dead, and he claimed he was the best player, but each time he like live streamed it, he was shown to be using cheats and stuff, and well, there was a lot of drama about it, so um, well, yeah, that's why it's on the uh, iceberg. The Left 4 Dead 2 Boycott So basically, when Left 4 Dead 1 was made, lots of people loved the game because, you know, the gameplay, the infected, all of it, oh yeah, and the characters, can't forget the characters, because, well, it's kind of one of the main parts of Left 4 Dead. So then, a year later, Left 4 Dead 2 is made, but then this is what the Left 4 Dead 1 players feared. They feared that people would, like, forget how good Left 4 Dead 1 was, so, yeah, they kind of boycotted Left 4 Dead 2. But at the same time, if you think about it, when you buy Left 4 Dead 2, you could buy the DLCs for Left 4 Dead 1, so I don't think many people would really forget about it. Plus, there's lots of SFM animations of the Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 characters. So really, I don't think many people forget about it, but since it was back in the day in 2009 and 10, I guess there wasn't many SFM animations. Or there was, but they're, you know, kinda small. Or just not many. 
the witch in real life. So it was basically just a uh, photoshopped video of the witch like crying with uh, you know sound effects that sound like the witch but you know worse because of the camera. I'll show you the clip. So I can't really actually find the clip mostly because well it was either removed or well yeah just removed. So I guess we'll move on to the next entry. Cut Dark Carnival NPC. So there was a cut NPC in Dark Carnival, but there's not really much information about it. You can't really find much about the NPC. And then finally, with Purple Francis. So, you see this? This is a four, well, technically five paragraph, like essay looking thing about someone who created Purple Francis. There's a lot about it, but it's really easy to search about it since you can really just go to like Vice or something, or just go to really any website and it'll show uh, who like Purple Francis is and who created him. So we're at the final layers of the Lefferty Iceberg. Now these ones are a little shorter than the last few ones. I'm not really sure why, but uh, each layer you go on, it kind of gets shorter and shorter. As you can see, you can see what a jockey jumping. I don't know what he's doing. And they can see uh, the safe zone or safe room at Dark Carnival. All of the Valve games are in Left 4 Dead. So this can actually refer to a lot of things. But in the Valve games, there's a little references or well, little references to other games in the Valve game. It's so like similar locations. Or like what Alice or Lewis says, they feel like Gordon Freeman when you have the crowbar, or feels like they're in TF2. The Jockey and APPA, or APPA, share the same VA. I couldn't really find anything on this, because, uh, well, it's really confusing. I don't know what the APPA or VA really means. The Left 4 Dead dubs. So basically, there's actually dubs of uh, the Left 4 Dead comics. There's dubs of other comics like Scott Pilgrim and, well, that's really the only one I know, but still, there's other dubs. And basically, if you don't know what a dub is, it's basically just uh, people talking for the characters in the uh, story. Bill's Ghost. So apparently, while people play Left 4 Dead 2, and I guess in the passing, people recall seeing Bill's like ghosts, even though I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be a ghost in Left 4 Dead. Because I've been playing Left 4 Dead for about 8 years now, I have never seen a ghost of Bill before. Terror Strike. So basically, before Left 4 Dead became, well, Left 4 Dead. The game was originally be, gonna be like some Terror Strike game. I can't find like a correct photo of like what the UI would look like, but this is like a picture of what Zoe would, would you know, originally look like. And this is actually one of her original looks, but except her sweater was actually red instead of blue. Zoe is the only survivor to only say the F word. Now technically, only Zoe, Coach, and Nick say the F word. Nobody else really says it, and the reason for it isn't really because of the game. Well, maybe, eh, maybe it is because of the game, but it's mostly because of the ratings of the game, even though it is 18 plus. So that was layer 6 of the iceberg, and now we move on to the final layer, which is layer 7. Daybreak Gnome Dimension. So basically, in multiple maps, there's a little bit of like these passcodes. And basically, if you open some of these like doors on the maps, then you'll find a bunch of gnomes. So, uh, well, yeah, Daybreak Gnome Dimension, that's what it basically is. This is Valve's least known franchise. There's not really much known about this since it doesn't really show. Like, what is the most popular, you know, Valve game, and then what's the least known Valve game. But if I were to guess, I feel like Left 4 Dead would be the most popular, or even Half-Life. And then at the bottom, it would probably be, like, Portal or something. Even though Portal isn't even a bad game. 
The Dark Carnival Menu Zombie. Basically, as you can see from the video I just played, there's basically a dark carnival zombie in the main menu. It has glowing eyes unlike all the other zombies, but only appears for like, what, half a second? Golden Eye for Dead Rooms. This is a mod map made by a guy named Fabian. Or Fabian. Or just Fabian, I don't know how you pronounce it. And I'm not really sure why this would be this deep into the iceberg. I guess it's probably because this isn't really a known map, but at the same time, there's not really many known maps in my opinion, or at least like online maps. Dead air has the most dead people. There are a few reasons why this is here, but if you remember in Swamp Fever, when the pilot turns into a zombie, you had to kill it, remember? So then, if you really think about it, in dead air, when you get to all those planes and stuff, and all those dead people, you can really think that uh, the pilot could have turned into a zombie and could have infected everybody on the plane, which, well, kind of did cause a plane crash, and then, well, yeah, lots of dead bodies. So that's probably the main reason this is here, because, you know, there's lots of uh, dead people. Oh yeah, and also, since about 50 to 850 people could fill on an airplane, and these planes probably couldn't carry that much in Left 4 Dead, but I guess you could go for like 200, and there's a bunch of planes here. You can really think there's like, what, 10,000 dead people here? Other Left 4 Dead icebergs. There is Left, other Left 4 Dead icebergs, but since I'm redoing this one, I kind of had to pick this one, since I wanted to redo it, since the last time I did this, which was a year ago, that was a really bad one, so... Uh, yeah, there is other love for that once. Shrek Tank. Basically, there's an add-on slash mod in the workshop of Love for Dead where you can get uh you know Shrek as a tank. I think that's pretty obvious. What it truly means to be glooptastic. This basically refers to this mod map, and there's basically a bunch of them. There's Glooptastic 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's about 4 to 7 campaigns in them. Left 4 Dead 3. And for the final entry, we have Left 4 Dead 3, which, you know, isn't really a real thing. Unless you want to count Back for Trash, but we don't really like Back for Trash. Uh, Left 4 Dead 3 isn't real. I mean, there are some, like, fan-made trailers of it and stuff, but it's not really real. And, well, yeah, that's the end of the iceberg. Now I'm actually done with this iceberg. I'm gonna do another one, but before I do that, I'm gonna basically make another premiere. Where I basically combine all of these icebergs together. So, you know, all Left 4 Dead ones that I've done into one big video so you don't have to you know like watch them individually or something